Okay. We're going to continue on. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff to cover. So now, specific heat defined as a number of BTUs required to raise the temperature of one pound of substance one degree Fahrenheit. Specific heat of water is 1.00. Specific heat of ice is approximately 0 0.50. Specific heat of steam is approximately 0 0.50. Specific heat of air is approximately 0 0.24. Okay, so when we look at specific heat, it almost looks like the definition of BTU, right? Almost. 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 Except it's not water, it's a substance. So every substance is going to have a specific heat. And that heat is going to be determined on the, basically to make it simple, it's going to determine the amount of water content in that substance. So something with a lot of water con content, like watermelon, mm -hmm. is going to be closer to one. Uh, specific heat is always going to be below one. We notice that specific heat, or heat is water. And that means that it takes one BTU to raise one pound of water one degree. So if we go back to our chart, we can see that right here. We're going up 180 degrees and it's taking 180 BTUs. Okay. Now if we look at ice down here, we're raising the temperature of ice from zero to 32, how many degrees is that? 32. 32. It's taking 16 BTUs to make that temperature change because ice is approximately 0.5. Oh, okay. So does that kind of make a little bit more sense? Yeah. Yep. So nothing's gonna be higher than one. Water is, water is the standard. They use water for everything because water is it's constant. It's a resource that never goes away. Yeah. So we, we'll, well, think about it. There's no such thing as a water shortage. It's true. Can you burn it? Can you burn water? Mm -hmm. No, you can heat it, but you can't burn it. Light <laughs> a fire, light it on top of it. Good luck. Can you water? Just get it back where water will just go back. Yeah. What happens when you heat it? Evaporates. It evaporates. Yeah. What happens to rainwater? It comes back down. Comes back down in rain. It evaporates and it comes back down in rain. So really, there is no water shortage. The same amount of water has been on Earth, pretty much the same from day one. And I'm going to say uh, six thousand years ago. Okay. So it all gets recycled, okay? So and the more it evaporates, the more uh, undissolved solids stay behind. So that's why the sea is salty. That's why Salt Lake City is salty water because there's no input and there's no output of that water. It just evaporates. So leaving behind the minerals, which is the salt, okay? So that is our uh, specific heat. Okay, so if we're going to size heating equipment, and we'll get into this and, and we'll walk through this, we're going to talk about uh, quantity of heat. So quantity of heat is always uh, identified as Q. So we talk about heat, total heat content, and that's going to be Q. So our total heat that we need is going to be the weight times the specific heat times the temperature difference. So if we plug the BTU formula in there, it would be one times the specific heat of water would be one times the temperature difference, which would be one, and you'd come up with one. One. No, not one. He's not here. <clears throat> he's, he's in the other room now. Yeah. Um, so this is just a fact here that w this, this terminology here, we're talking about 12,000 BTUs equals one ton of refrigeration 
that's something that you're going to need to remember for the rest of your life. Okay? Sounds good. So that is on the contractor's exam. If you're going to take a contractor's exam, that question is on there. Okay? You, you'll get used to it. You've seen it. You're going to copy it. It's already on there. It's down here. Okay, so if we're going to size heating equipment, here's an example that's pulled from the book. Okay, so the example would be a thousand pounds of steel that's got to be heated from zero degrees to 70 degrees. How much heat is going to be required to accomplish that? What? It tells you everything right there. Yeah, specific heat of steel is 0.116. Thousand pounds. Substituting the above formula gives you a thousand pounds times 0.116, and how many degrees you're going to raise it from zero to seventy? How many degrees is that? Seventy. Oh, it's seventy, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you put the numbers in there. You come up with the eight thousand one hundred and twenty BTUs it's going to take to raise that steel temperature. Now, why would we want to raise the temperature of steel? Why is that? Why is that example even in the book? To bend it. Oh, so you can bend it at seventy degrees, but you can't bend it at zero degrees. Nope. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> the only <laughs> thing that I can think of is they want to process the metal, and they have to bring it up to a, a temperature, or weld it, or process, or do something with it, and it obviously out in sitting outside somewhere somewhere where it's zero degrees outside, not anywhere here. So, not really a very good example. But, I do have a good example. Okay, so here's, a, here's a, an example that may be used here. <clears throat> if we have 50,000 pounds of beef that comes from the slaughterhouse at 80 degrees, that needs to be cooled to 40 degrees, <clears throat> right? How many BTUs is going to be needed to do that operation? Bring it down to. What's the specific heat? Oh, very good. What? What's, it? What's the specific heat? The specific heat. A beef. There it is. <clears throat> this is a chart that you probably find on the on the internet somewhere. Where I got it. Okay, it says here beef carcass is 0.68. Uh, BTU or BTUs per pound. What was the example again? What? What's the, the example? Oh, you want me to the, the example? 50,000 pounds <coughs> times 0.68 times how many degrees? 40. 40. You got to pull it down to 40 degrees. So instead of adding heat, now we're taking heat out. Okay, this is what refrigeration does it, it removes heat. Okay, so as we add it all up and we work this formula out, we come up with 113.33 BTUs per hour needs to be taken, taken out. Or tons, say tons. So there's 12,000 BTUs in a ton, so 113 tons. Now, refrigeration is always sized per day. Okay, different from air conditioning, air conditioning is sized per hour. Refrigeration runs 24 hours a day, air conditioning runs not 24 hours a day. So that's why air conditioning is always sized per hour and refrigeration is always sized per day. So when we get a 4.7 ton refrigerate, refrigeration unit, we can accomplish that 50,000 pounds of beef. Right now, that 50,000 pounds could be a trailer, or it could be a walk-in, or something somewhere where we're going to put it. But normally, if it's coming from the slaughterhouse and going to a cold storage, you generally want that trailer to pull it down in route. Okay, that's just one of the things that they like doing. They like to pull that temperature, that beef down, or that product down to temperature when it comes from the field. They put it in the truck, and the truck takes it to where it needs to go, 
In the meantime, while the truck's driving down the road, it's also pulling temperature. It's pulling that product down to temperature. So all it has to do is, huh? Pretty dope. Yeah. Pretty dope? You said pretty dope. Yeah. I had dope right here. Okay. Be your best friend. Okay. Now there's another operation when you talk about product, and when we deal with refrigeration, we're dealing with product. We're dealing with air conditioning. We're dealing with people. So I understand that we're this mod. We're going to focus more on air conditioning, but this is just an example of specific heat and how it's used. Okay, so I got that the equal heat use. So how did you get the or one point the one one three? Where, where does that come from? After you do the whole formula. The one, this? Yeah, where does that come from? I didn't come up That's how many tons it's going to take. Oh, okay, okay. Per hour. Mm -hmm. But because we don't we don't size it by the hour, we had to divide it by 24. Okay. And that's going to give us our, our tonnage for that equipment. Okay. So the other operation, if you're going to take it down below zero, so um, you got to figure the formula again below freezing. So this is specific heat of solids and our specific heat now changes to 0.48. So once it's frozen, now we got to do the formula again twice. If you're going to go below zero or below 32, you basically, you got 50,000 pounds of beef and you did this number here and you come up with uh, a million BTUs. 52 degrees because you're going from 80 degrees down to 32, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you apply this, and it's gonna give you another number. So the 50,000 pounds is gonna be 147 tons of refrigeration per hour. So that's what this number is here is. That's, that's because we have a different temperature. So we got more than 113 like we did in the last one. So once we get it down below freezing, we got this other specific heat, and we're gonna take it down to zero, which is another 32 degrees, let's say, and that's how many BTUs it's gonna to have to be removed. So that's gonna be another 64 tons, or we add these up and we come up with um, 211 tons of refrigeration per hour. So we divide it by 24 hours because refrigeration is sized by hours. So we've got 8.8 .8 tons of refrigeration per day. And that's what's going to take that beef car carcass that's 80 degrees from a slaughterhouse and bring it down to zero degrees. That's what we're going to need 8.8 .8 tons of refrigeration. So 8.8 .8 tons times 12,000 is, is how many BTUs you're going to have. So this example will be here for like a slaughterhouse and a storage cell. Right. Yeah, if you're going to store it down at a low temperature before you process it, before you, yeah, for long storage, long term storage. Uh, this is actually how it's done. This is actually the process of sizing walk ins and refrigerators and stuff. So I don't expect you to get this. This is just kind of an example. I don't, this is not going to be tested on or anything. It's just, I just want you to give you an example of how I wanted a better example than heating up a thousand pounds of steel. Okay, so we're going to move on to pressure. 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 Defined as the force per unit area, often expressed in pounds per square inch. Example, if a 100 pound weight rests on a surface of a 1 square inch, the pressure is 100 psi. Example, if a 100 pound weight rests on a surface of 100 square inches, the pressure is only 1 psi. Okay, you guys get that? You guys understand what they're talking about there? Yep. If you look in the book, there's an example of that. That's on page 25. So that means that, <clears throat> whether you guys realize it or not, yeah, we live, we live in a pressure vessel, let's say. Mm -hmm. We live under pressure. So when, when, when somebody says what's wrong, you just say I'm under pressure, which is true. We're under atmospheric pressure. So the atmospheric pressure is giving us the pressure that we, that we are in right now. Um, now. Not like in space. In space, there's no pressure. 
So it's the difference. Uh, how many of you gone deep deep sea de uh, fishing? You ever you ever reel up a fish that's been way down below and the eyeballs pop out when you bring them up board? That's because it's used to that much pressure. When it's down below, the, the further down in the water you go, the greater the pressure, right? So the same thing with the atmosphere. So we're at sea level, we're at the maximum atmospheric pressure that we can get, really, unless we're below sea level. So when we talk about pressure, and we're talking about the pressure that we live in, because we live in pressure, it greatly affects the, um, the boiling point of, say, water. So, oh, there it is there. I guess you didn't have to look it up. That's a little different, though. So if we say at the bottom of the ocean, if we want our eyes to pop out, if we're huh? not used to that pressure at the bottom of the sea, where our eyes pop out, if we're at the bottom of the sea, if we if we suddenly get down yeah. in the bottom of the sea, no, our eyes will sink into our heads. Oh, yeah. We'll be crushed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The same thing would happen if we were flung out into space, where there's no pressure. Really? We would explode. We would explode. Oh yeah, yeah. That's when they pop out. Yeah. That's when we're yeah. expanding out yeah. there. <laughs> so there was a movie, and I I wish I could remember the name of it. But there's only one one accurate movie that I saw that actually happened where somebody was blown out of the airlock into space. Gravity? Huh? Is it gravity? I, I'm not movie? sure the name of it, but it was, most of the time you see somebody fly out of an airlock and you see them floating, going, ah, oh, oh, you know. That, that ain't gonna happen. Because immediately you're in no pressure. Your body is used to having uh, atmospheric pressure, which is 14.696 pounds per square inch, and you would instantly freeze. So you'd explode and freeze at the same time because minus 460 is what? Or minus 458? That's pretty cold. Yeah. That's instant freeze. It's so <laughs> the only one movie that I saw would actually somebody got blown out of an airlock and it was just like, it was red ice. So it was like, that was the accurate. I, I looked at it, I go, now that's how it's supposed to be. You don't see this guy floating out. <laughs> no, 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 it's no. <laughs> but that's Hollywood. <clears throat> okay, so the atmospheric pressure is the weight of the atmosphere, and it is 14.696 pounds per square inch. So 14.696 pounds per square inch is pushing on your body right now, every inch of your body. You feel that pressure? Nope. No, I'm starting to feel it now. I'm starting to think about it. Man, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> okay, so what they call is 14.696 psi at sea level is known as the standard conditions. Okay. It's also measured with a barometer. Now we're going to we got another measuring device that's going to measure this, and that's the barometer, mercury barometer. This mercury barometer has mercury at the bottom of this dish. The weight of the atmosphere pushes on this mercury, and as it does, it pushes this mercury up this column. And for standard condition, this measurement from here to here is 29.92 inches of mercury. That's standard atmospheric barometric pressure. So it's just another pressure measuring device that we use to measure barometric pressure or atmospheric pressure. <clears throat> you're, gonna, you're gonna see this term when you watch the news, right? When you watch the weather, right? They talk about the, the barometric pressure, whether in a, uh, a high or low pressure system. Do we know what we're in right now? Is it, are we in a high or low pressure system in the valley? Low, low, I say high. High pressure. If you watch the weatherman, he's gonna show you the high pressure and where the high pressure ridge is I just say this is the high pressure. We've got this high pressure building right here. That means the barometer is going up higher than 29.92. Okay, so when the pressure drops, the atmospheric pressure drops, so as it varies, it's going to drop. As it starts to fall, we're in a low pressure system, it usually means rain or cold. So when you watch the weatherman, it's what I did every morning. <clears throat> I watched what kind of ambient temperature was going to be, I'm going to be working in 
not because I wanted to feel comfortable, is because our temp uh, the temperature greatly affects our pressures in our refrigeration system and our conditioning system. So what we're going to read on the gauges is going to depend on what the outdoor the outdoor temperature is. Okay, so that's that makes a difference. So one or two degrees, one or two pounds, will make a difference to be to in order to uh, accurately check a system with, with gauges, you're going to need to know what the temperature is. Okay? Everybody know what that is? Everybody know what temperature that is? Oh, look. It says right there. <laughs> okay. Here's something you don't know, though. 212. Boil, water boils at 212, right? Atmospheric pressure. We go up in high altitudes, water boils at 158 degrees. We put that water in a vacuum, now it's, it's boiling at 40 degrees. So the pressure makes a difference on the boiling temperature. So what does that mean? You can't cook beans at high altitude. They cook beans in the mountains. <laughs> because beans take Say beans take, uh, let's say, 190 degrees to cook. Okay, if you're above, uh, say, 8,000, 9,000 feet, your water is going to boil off at 180 degrees, let's say, and the beans are just going to sit there and never reach the cooking temperature. So the beans will just rattle around in the pan while the water evaporates. So it'll never cook, you'd never be able to cook beans in the mountains. So how, how could you cook beans in the mountain? Not huh? at lower pressure? Lower temperatures? Cook them down here and take them up there? Not too, yeah. <laughs> but it's canned beans. You just take canned beans. Yeah. Canned you don't try beans. to cook beans up in the mountains. Heat it up. Huh? Or, you guys heard of a pressure cooker? Plug in a pressure cooker. Pressure cooker. Okay, so pressure cooker is actually increases the pressure, which increases the boiling temperature. So at 250 pounds or 15 pounds uh, per square inch gauge pressure, um, your boiling temperature would be about 250. Okay, so for every 500 foot increase in elevation, water's boiling point is lowered approximately half a degree Celsius. So at 8,000 feet in elevation, water boils at 198 degrees, let's say. So if you're at Shaver, nobody knows where Shaver is, right? You don't know where Shaver is? You don't know where Shaver is. Okay, it's about 5,600 feet. So water boils at roughly 205 degrees, okay? So this is actually out of a culinary, uh, off a culinary website to where I can actually show you some of the things. It says that um, vegetables and some starches will simply take longer to cook in high altitudes. Rice and whatever that word is, legumes, which means beans, I guess, usually require pressure cookers. Okay, possible also require a pressure cooker because it has to be it has to be at a certain temperature to cook, and if the water is boiling off before that temperature, it never cooks. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. It's the same thing that happens in your car in your radiator. The cooling system in your car that cools the motor circulates the water around the inside the motor. It's also under pressure. Okay. And how I know that is because if you're going to replace your radiator cap, there is a pressure on that cap. Whatever pressure you want, you buy that cap. If it's 15 pounds, or if it's 17 pounds, or whatever, you're going to you're going to do that. So at, at 15 pounds, then your waters are going to boil at 250. Now, if your water is boiling, if you don't have pressure on the system, your water is going to boil at 212 degrees. That doesn't do much cooling. For the, it can't circulate the water because it's boiling, boiling off. So they, they increase the pressure in the cooling system 
to to raise that boiling point so that water can still stay liquid. Okay, we can take the cap off when the radiator is hot. So instantly you, you expose that cooling system to atmospheric pressure. So you've dropped the pressure now, and by there, by, by doing that, you've dropped the boiling point of that water to 212. So as it drops to 212, it just doesn't go to 212 and, and stop. It just continually, that water is hot. It's 250, 260, 270 degrees. It's continually, until that, until that water temperature drops below 212, it's, it's going to boil. It's going to continue to boil. I've, I've done that, and I've heard it just boiling inside the inside the, the motor and the block and the radiator. And I'm thinking, what the heck is that noise? It's just clunk, 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 all these knocking notes. But now I realize that it's that water temperature is so high that it's taken a while for it to come down to 212 to stop boiling. Okay. So the boiling point of water, which is 212 at whatever that is, altitude. Um, here's, this is just a chart of where that, at 15,000 feet, water is going to boil at 184 degrees. This is just kind of an example of where the boiling point and the boiling temperature. So in Bass Lake, they have to, that, I think Bass Lake is 8,000, right? Elevation? So they have to use pressure cookers to, to cook certain things? Some certain things, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Some people argue with me, and I say, well, I, I, science. Uh, uh, those beans that rattle around in the pan, I, you know. <laughs> of course, if you pre-soak them, I mean, then they're. But yeah. Okay, we all know what that. You know what that is? It's a pressure cooker. That is a pressure. That is old school pressure cooker. I grew up with them. That, my grandma had one. They they, don't use them. they 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 can still use them. Yeah, I love them. Now I'm using my house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's that little deal on top is a little weighted thing and that you 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 spin it and put it on one of those one of those holes and it rattles. It rattles back and forth. So depending on what pressure you want, it's gonna be determined by it rattling back and forth. But it's nothing new. But you would think it's new. New technology? Right there. No, it's been around for years. It's a pressure cooker. It's that's just the, got some digital yeah, controls on it. Killing pressure through the thing. Okay. So what do we got here? Oh, yeah. Good one. Pressure gauges. Uh, burner tube measures pressure in a closed system. Used to measure the uh, measure the pressure in an air conditioning or refrigeration system. Gauges reach zero psi when open to the atmosphere. Gauge pressures are measured in pounds per square inch. Gauge PSI. Okay, so the board on two. Here's the cartoon of it. It's a tube that is. It's made out of uh, brass and copper. So as it as the pressure increases, it has a tendency to straighten out or uncurl itself, and it's hooked to a gear, which gives us our needle. That's what's that's what's in our gauges right there. With a bordon tube, not bourbon, bordon. That's I'm, that's, I'm gonna use that to, to learn it. I don't remember it's bourbon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's a picture of it. What it looks like. Looks like that. So it's uh, like a copper tube soldered in there. Okay. Summary: Thermometers measure temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the molecular movement. One BCU raises the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. Heat can be transferred by conduction, convection, or radiation. Summary continues. Sensible heat transfers change the temperature of a substance. Latent heat transfers a result in a change of state with no change of temperature. Pressure is a force per unit area. Parameters measures atmospheric pressure and in inches of mercury. So we'll continue. Gauges measure pressure in enclosed systems. Okay, so what what they talk about is our gauges. If, if I open these gauges up to atmosphere, 
if I take that off there and I take this off. What do you think it's going to read on my gauges? Zero. Zero. Okay, so where's the atmospheric pressure? Where? Yeah, where is it? If it reads zero. It's in the atmosphere yeah, around us. So gauge pressure is not the same as atmospheric pressure. No. So that's why PSIG is pounds per square inch gauge, and PSIA is pounds per square inch atmospheric or absolute. So the gauges are compensated for the atmospheric pressure. I can't get that on there. So there's a difference between gauge pressure and uh, absolute pressure. So a lot of times we're going to have to convert gauge pressure to atmospheric pressure to do calculations for whatever we need to do, especially when we're talking about gas laws and stuff like that. And we'll get into gas laws um, probably next week. Uh, tomorrow we'll be on Unit 35, and we've got a bunch of other stuff to do that it pertains to Unit 35. This is just basically theory. Um, I do have a, uh, a lab for you if you want to do it. Yes. Yes. Magic. <laughs> you do magic too? Huh? Oh, you do magic too? Magic can? This is, this is your <laughs> this is magic seat. <laughs> just to get you used to uh, converting those temperatures. Amazing.